Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. This is our first video on the conjugate B method. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of explanation as we normally do. Then we're going to go and solve a fairly simple problem. Uh, something to note in this problem is we have two, uh, we have a non-prismatic beam, so we have AB, which is uh, 6,000 inches to the fourth, uh, moment of inertia, and then half of that for BC. So that's going to be a little bit of a trick, something that's going to come up in your test for sure. And we're asked to find the deflection and slope at B using the conjugate beam method. So what is the conjugate beam method? Well, um, conjugate beam method essentially is where we solve for the moment diagram of the real beam. So the beam here, we solve for the, the moment diagram and we divide it by EI. And then we take that load and we put it onto what's called the conjugate beam. Okay, and then from that, we can solve for the deflection and the slope. That's essentially what we're going to do. So we're going to go through it step by step. I'll try and explain it to you. And uh, it's not too hard. This is pretty simple. Um, remember, this is also for determinate structures. So this is not an indeterminate problem. Um, yeah, okay. So let's just get started. And along the way, I'll explain what's going on. So the first step in the conjugate beam method is to take the beam as is and find the moment diagram. So if you need to find the shear and then find the moment, that's okay. If you're comfortable with finding the moment diagram just straight up, that's also, that can save you some time. So that may be something that you want to look into practicing, is being able to write the moment diagram uh, without drawing the shear. So right first step, we're going to start by drawing the moment diagram on the real beam. So we're not going to change anything. We're going to take the beam as is, and we're going to draw the moment diagram. So as we see, we have a fixed support here, and we have a uh, 20 kip force at the end. Okay, so we have 25 feet in between. So we're going to have a reaction here, counterclockwise of 20 okay, times 25, right? So this is 20 times 25, and that's 500 kip feet. Okay? So what is the moment diagram going to look like? Well, uh, because, and if you remember, so these are little things. If you're more comfortable with um, the basics of the shear and bending moment diagrams, uh, take a look at our earlier videos if you're not, but you'll know that if we have a counterclockwise moment, that is going to cause a negative moment on the bending moment diagram. Okay. And we know that as we, uh, the, the moment is going to be linear because the shear here is a constant uh, 20 kip. So the moment diagram has to be one degree higher. So if this is constant, this must be linear. And we know that at the end, free end, the moment is equal to zero. So there we go. That's good to note. This is 500 kip feet. This is negative, And this is the moment diagram. Okay, so that, that's what we've done is the first step in any conjugate beam method question. So now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to find the conjugate beam. So what the conjugate beam involves, this one's pretty easy, is we're going to replace the supports and we're going to replace the free ends, okay, with, uh, with uh, what's called the conjugate beam, okay? So how we do that, and there's a table, I'm just going to put the table up on the screen. All you're going to really do is follow this table, and you may not be given this table, so you may have to memorize it, but a good thing to remember is that when we're replacing a support, okay, for example, if we're replacing the fixed end support with the, the conjugate beam support, what we're going to want to, and you want to take a look at the deflection and the slope at that support. So for example, at support A, we have a fixed support, so there's no rotation and there's no deflection at A. So we're going to replace it with something that has no shear and no moment, so that corresponds. So whatever the slope is, we want it, that to correspond with the shear and our replaced support, and whatever the deflection is, we want it to correspond with the moment. Okay, so for example, this has no slope, right? Slope is equal to zero, so we're going to replace it with a free end because slope at the free end is also equal to zero. And uh, as well, uh, for the deflection equal to zero, we're going to replace it with the free end where the moment is equal to zero. Okay, so that's, uh, that's kind of an idea, but you can just follow the table, but that's just a way to think about it, okay? So um, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the table again. I'll put the table up on the screen, and as you can see, when we have a fixed end, we replace it with a free end. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write conjugate beam. Okay, so we have point A here. We have A, B, C. So we're going to replace the fixed end with a free end, and then we're going to get to the end. And as you can see from the table, we're going to replace the free end with a fixed end. So essentially, the beam flips in this case. Every case will be different, and this can get a little tricky if you have lots of like pins and rollers and, and hinges and all that kind of stuff. And there's some uh, tricks, but as long as you know this table on the screen, you're good to go. So this is our conjugate beam, okay? So um, the next step is going to construct, be constructing the M over EI diagram, and we're going to put that M over EI diagram 
from the real beam onto the conjugate beam. And then from there, we can solve for deflection and slope. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we have our conjugate beam here. Okay, write an arrow down there. So we have our conjugate beam. Let's pretend that this one here is a conjugate beam. And we're going to put our moment diagram on there, okay? So what we're going to need to do, okay, is we're going to need to construct the M over EI diagram. So we're going to say 500 over now. The important thing to note here, and this is the trick, is that this first portion, AB, has an uh, I of 6,000. BC has an I of 3,000. So this is 2I, and this is I. Okay? So we have to include that 2I when we, when we write in our EI. Okay? So we have A, B, C. Okay? So um, if we go over to B here, okay, and we're going to need to know the value of the moment diagram here. And you can use similar triangles because we know this whole thing is 25 feet. Okay? And this is 15 feet and this is 10 feet. Okay? You can use similar triangles. Um, we can also uh, take a look at the diagram and we can see that we have 20 kip times times 10. Okay? So we know that this is uh, the moment at this point is 200. Okay? So we can go 200 over 2ei. Okay? So this is going to be for the left side. And uh, I'm just going to put this, this is going to be for the left side, okay? And then we have 200 over EI for the right side, okay? Because uh, as we get to the BC portion, okay, we don't have that 2EI anymore, and this is going to be zero. So what that's going to look like, okay, I know that's a little bit confusing, but let me redraw it for you here, okay, is we're going to have 500 divided by 2 over EI, so this is 250, okay? And we're going to go over to B, same slope as before, okay? Very good. And as we can see on the left, we have 200 over 2EI. So this is going to be uh, 100, but we don't need to write that. We'll just write that over here. So we know what this little rectangle is here. And then at, on, just to the right of that, we go back to 200 over EI. Okay, and then we go over to zero. So that's, um, that's essentially how you draw the uh, conjugate beam. We'll label that. And uh, important thing to note is because it's negative, the loading is going to be acting downwards. And that's actually important because that's going to determine the uh, direction of the slope and the deflection. Cool. So, okay, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've redrawn um, conjugate beam. So we have our conjugate beam loaded with the, uh, the real loading of the M over EI diagram. And now what we were asked to do is we're asked to find the deflection and the slope at B. So uh, just important thing to note, when we have our conjugate beam, okay, the, sh the shear on the conjugate beam at a point is equal to the slope. So shear equals slope, okay? And moment on the conjugate beam equals deflection, okay? So once we've found the M over EI diagram, we put it onto the conjugate beam. If we cut the beam at a point and we find the bending moment or the shear, those are equal to the deflection and the slope, respectively. So let's go ahead and find the shear at B. And when we find the shear at B, that's going to be equal to the slope. So we'll find the shear at B, okay? Is, we'll call that SB. And to find the shear of the moment diagram, all we need to do is just find the area of the M over EI diagram. By finding the area, that'll give us the, the shear. So let's cut the beam at B, okay? And when we cut the beam at B, we can analyze either the right side or the left side, okay? Take the moment, or take the shear or the moment of area at either side. As we can see, the left side is much easier because we have this support here, and we would need to solve for the reactions in the moment if we wanted to analyze the right side of the beam. So let's look at the left side, and all we need to do is just take the area of this, okay? So uh, if we can remember what the dimensions were, this is 10 feet, that's 15. So we're going to take the 1 over EI out of the equation, okay? And remember the signs here, we have a negative area, okay? Because it's acting down, so don't forget that. So we have 100, okay, times 15, so this little rectangle here, okay? And we're also going to need to include this triangle here, so we have 150 height, okay? And we have 15 base divided by 2. Okay. And if we go ahead and put that into our calculator, okay, uh, we'll get that the shear at B is equal to negative 2,625 kip feet squared over EI, and that is actually equal to the slope at B. Okay. And finally, if we go ahead and plug in the numbers here, so we have 2,625 over E, which is 29,000, okay, and I 
which is 3,000, okay, because we've included that 2i in the i, so we've uh, i is just now 3,000. And therefore, we're going to get that theta b is equal to 0 0.0043 radian. Okay, and also make sure that when we get our radian value, we are get, giving a direction. Okay, so we're going to give it our clockwise direction because it is a negative value. Okay, very good. So let's go ahead and find the moment at B. And the moment at B is going to be equal to, uh, to the deflection. Okay, and we're going to say counterclockwise is positive. And like, uh, we're going to do exactly the same thing here. We're going to take the area, but then we're just going to multiply each shape by its centroid. Okay, and I'm actually going to come down here a little bit. So we have the moment at B, so we have a little more room. Okay, 1 over EI, that is going to be multiplied by the area of this rectangle here, so at, sorry, this is AB, so at AB, okay, and that is going to be 100, okay, negative, okay, times 15, times the distance to the centroid from B, so 7.5, perfect. Now let's do the triangle, so we have 150, okay, we have uh, the base times height divided by 2, and that's also going to be multiplied by the centroid. And we know from B, okay, it's going to be 2 over 3 times 15, okay? Times 2 over 3 times 15, okay? Okay, and what does that give us? Well, if we plug everything in, we're going to get a, ma a moment at B, okay? Negative 22,500 kip foot cubed over EI. That's also equal to the deflection at B. And if we go ahead and plug in some values... Just plug in E, plug in I. Okay, our deflection at B is simply, if we go ahead and calculate this out, we're going to have 0 0.45 inches, and that deflection is going to be down. There we go. So, simple question on the uh, conjugate beam method. Maybe we'll do some more where we solve some trickier conjugate beams, but that's basically it. If you follow this pr procedure, make sure when you cut and you ch choose either the left or right, you're, you're choosing smart, you know, so you don't choose something where you have to find the reactions if possible. And uh, yeah, just make it easy on yourself. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe.